Hello, flower lovers. I'm Carolyn Ellis. Welcome to Design in Bloom, seasonal flowers for your table and home. I often hear people say, I love flowers. I wish I could arrange them. Design in Bloom is my response. In each episode, I will take you step by step through a flower arrangement, low stress, high success. Thanks for joining me. Let's design some flowers for your table and home. Hello, flower lovers. I'm Carolyn Ellis. I'm so glad you're with me today. It's fall in Massachusetts. It's a great season to arrange flowers. I have two color blocked arrangements to show you today. The first is this large one, which I made last night. I'll walk you through the plant material that's in it. And then I have a smaller container scaled for your table or home. And with that one, step by step, I'll make a color blocked arrangement so you can see how it's done. The basic idea of color blocking is you cluster the plant material, the flowers, and the foliage by type. So here in the front, I've chosen orange lilies, pale orange and yellow protea. Coming around, these are red fruit clusters. They're from a sumac tree, and I harvested them along the parkway near where I live. Also harvested are rose hips. There are green ones that you can see, and some red ones here too. The purple foliage is azalea, which I was able to cut in my friend Cynthia's garden. There are dried materials here too, which is one of the nice aspects of arranging in the fall. We have a wildflower, and we have preserved oak leaves. They are tinted red, and they stand out just beautifully against these sumac fruit clusters. So, I'll get this to you so you can have another look at the front, and then we will move on to the smaller arrangement. Here is the container I'm going to use for the step-by-step -step arrangement that's color blocked. Remember, the goal here is always low stress, high success. I'll take you through this step by step. First, let me show you the container. It's a container I've used before, a compote, a lovely modern bowl on a little foot. And it's deep enough so that as the stems go in, they'll keep their balance and the flowers and foliage will actually stay in the arrangement. The mechanics I'm using are a a pillow, a plastic pillow, by the floral designer Holly Chapel. These are available at floral design stores and online. This one I have fastened in six or seven places at the perimeter, and I'm letting the top layer slightly emerge from the container. This is a great mechanic because the top and bottom have these hexagonal honeycomb openings, and they allow you to drive the stems in through two holes, which gives Lots of flexibility with the angles and also holds things in place really nicely. It's a great setup for a wild, airy arrangement, but it's also good for what I'm going to do today, which is a tighter arrangement. This color blocked arrangement will have everything pretty close to the bowl. I'm going to begin with azalea that I clipped from my friend Cynthia's garden. It is burnished purple from the fall and I'm going to cut the stems fairly short and just begin to tuck them in. I'm going to start low at the rim of the container and work my way up. These have a wonderful rosette with next spring's bud right there. And I'm putting them in at what we can think of as one o'clock on the clock. My plan for this arrangement is a three-pointed star, so I'll be working at one o'clock, four to five o'clock, and nine to 10 o'clock. You'll see what I mean. Let's get all this in here. When I chose the flowers for the larger arrangement that I showed you, I was thinking about their color, their size, their texture, and their form. The same is true of foliage. So let me turn this around and you get see how this is shaping up. Again, it's color blocked, so I've grouped this all together. Then, I'm going to use hosta, again from my friend Cynthia's garden. She has a beautiful garden locally. These hosta leaves are wonderful because they're slender and they're pointed. They're also creamy and green, they're variegated. A very, very nice contrast to the shape and form of the azalea. And I'm tucking them in here, again in the lower right. It's always good when you start an arrangement to have a vision for what the arrangement's going to look like let's say you're going to color block, and to have a plan view in mind. So for me in this case, it's a three-pointed star. 
that feels comfortable to me. And I can just keep it in mind as I'm adding other things. Keep me from getting lost. This is lamb's ear. And we talked about thinking about color with flowers and foliage. Here we have a really nice range from purple to cream and green, and now this beautiful silvery gray. In addition, the textures vary nicely too. The azalea is um, a matte finish and slightly ruffled, slightly irregular. The hostas are beautiful. They are almost semi-gloss and very, very smooth. And then this silver gray lamb's ear, which I can show you right here. Oh my goodness, it's hairy. It almost needs a shave, but it's so soft. It's just soft and velvety. And again, we're working with colors. Foliage is a great way to make your arrangement really have distinction. Next, I'm going to add the first of the flowers, these purple callas, to this arrangement, and I am going to layer them on top of the hostas. This will be a really nice pairing of the smooth petals and the deep purple color with these, um, the leaves that have such beautiful variegation and so much personality. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Get a real third dimension out of these calla lilies. And purple is a great color to work with for fall. Next, I'm going to add the orange tulips. I'll take a few of them out right here. I'm gonna cut them pretty short right out of their foliage. Tulips are not everyone's favorite fall flower, but the colors are really irresistible. And they're certainly readily available in grocery stores and other places where many people find it easy to shop for flowers. They also have a smooth texture, which I really like. Mums are lovely, but they have a very complex texture, and that wasn't what I was going for. In many ways, although it's subtle, I really want to showcase the foliage. There, this here, oh, look at that. Oh, <laughs> they're so cute, the way, <laughs> like little, Look like little faces, just, ah, gotta love them. They're so cute. Here we go, there. But isn't it nice to see plant material clustered? Coming across, the next thing I'm going to add is hydrangea. And this is from Cynthia's garden. Her garden is so robust that honestly, to find a small blossom, you have to look very, very hard. But I did, and this I think is lovely, with the um, callas and with the foliage, just so pretty. So give us a clean little cut here. And tuck these right in. So here's where we are at the moment. Good. Now I'd like to add the preserved red leaves to this arrangement. Tucking these in, they offset the purple callas very nicely. I'm gonna let these just ride high right here. There. Something very important to do with your flowers, of course, is to get them ready before you begin to arrange. You see I've cleaned them up and they're in separate containers here by type. We call that conditioning. And conditioning is important because it gets your flowers clean. It gets them organized. It gives you a chance to spend a little time with them and to get a sense of um, their personality, what they look like in profile, what they look like head on, and you get really familiar with them so you know what you might want to do with them. The next element I want to add is some of these rose hips, and they are going to float right over here. There'll be an offset to the red, to the red leaves. These are a a treasure when you find them. Again, I found them along the parkway. Some were green, which I've never seen before. That looks great. And, um, and these red ones are just ripe and ready for the picking. So that was a happy, that was a happy day. 
The other thing I want to add to this is some pumpkins from the pumpkin tree plant. It's a form of eggplant, ornamental eggplant. So let's see how these tuck in. They should really be a very <laughs> sweet and fun addition. I think I'm close to being finished. That looks so nice. Really pulls, I'll show you, really pulls together the wonderful rosy orange of those tulips. Sometimes you think, is this, is this red or is this orange or is this pink? It's very hard to tell sometimes. So I'm excited about that. I think I'm put another piece in. I'm so excited about it. Let's just see how we do here. Great. Come back around, I'll tuck this right in here. There. Oh, I like that. I'm pleased with that. Looks great. Here are the two arrangements that I have showed you today. The large one I made last night and the smaller one that we put together step by step just now. Interesting to contrast and compare them, isn't it? As you know, I chose the flowers for their color, their size, their form, and their texture. And the same can apply to foliage, whether you're looking in your garden or whether you're looking in the place where you're buying your flowers. Foliage comes in many colors and many sizes and textures. So use that to your advantage. Working um, imaginatively with foliage can give your arrangement real distinction. Also, have a vision for your arrangement when you start. What do you want it to look like? And that will help you when you choose your container and the mechanics you'll use to hold the flowers in place. Additionally, you want to have a plan view. As I explained, I see this arrangement as a three-point star, and that has really helped me. It's anchored me as I've been building the layers from at the rim up closer to the center. So flower arranging should be low stress, high success, and with some of the guidelines I've given you, you just have to try it and do it. The more you practice, the better you'll get, and the more a joy it will become for you. Thanks for joining me. I'm Carolyn Ellis. This is Design in Bloom, arranging seasonal flowers for your table and home.